mean, have you noticed that not only do the major new the, the corrupt mainstream media not cover blood filling up in his eye right in the middle of a debate? If that had been Trump, we'd still be talking about it morning, noon, and night. New York Times would have to run a, a special magazine inserts about Trump's bloody eye. Joe Biden, well, you know, the front runner for the Democrats. And what happened? I mean, I, a lot of people have had burst blood vessels in their eye, but that looked like something right out of, you know, Lord of the Rings. Michelle Malkin has a book that is probably the most important book you could read. If you live in the Carolinas, and I'm going to focus like a laser on North Carolina. I, we get, I, I understand some of the insanity in California, California being California, but think of North Carolina. Spent a lot of time there. Cut my teeth and talk radio in the upstate of South Carolina. Met and married my wife there. I know the Carolinas well. Michelle Malkin is a wife, mother, American conservative blogger, syndicated columnist, political commentator, number one New York Times bestselling author. She's the author of the new book, Open Borders, Inc., Who's Funding America's Destruction? She joins us via Skype and on the radio here on the Mike Gallagher Show. It's been too long, Michelle. How have you been? Good. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to see your face on Skype and join us, hear, hear you on the radio. Uh, by the way, before we get to your book, have you heard any explanation of why Biden's eye was bleeding out? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't mean to be cruel here, but that's kind of a big deal that the that the front running Democrat candidate for president all of a sudden his left eye fills up with blood right in the middle of a debate with all, you know under all the cameras and the lights. That's a that's a that's a bad moment. Yeah, it's metaphorical, I think too. <laughs> I Apparently agree. The campaign is bleeding out as well. I agree. I agree. They're 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 scrambling. All right, let's talk about Open Borders Inc. And I like I said a moment ago, I want to spend. Uh, your book is so important. I mean, to to follow the money trail because there is a money trail, and there's a there's a talk about dark forces behind our our image our, our immigration crisis. But how about this, Michelle? Nearly 500 illegal aliens have been released from North Carolina jails despite ICE detainers. Now, th this this sanctuary city crap. In Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. Michelle, we're not talking about Berkeley. Yeah, Mike, I think it's such an important point because a lot of Americans are very complacent. They think, well, I don't live in Berkeley. I don't live in one of these far left enclaves. And yet what's happening is that many ordinary American cities and flyover country and places like North Carolina, and it seems shocking on its face, have become as overrun as, um, uh, as, as those far left cities. Well, what's happening is you do have to follow the money. And it's not just the crazies and the Soros social justice wing that have as their goal the undermining of American sovereignty. Unfortunately, there are a lot of big business interests and establishment interests that are behind it as well. And people would be shocked to learn that many religious nonprofits and charities, many of them operating in North Carolina, are aiding and abetting what is essentially a criminal illegal alien smuggling conspiracy and the metastasis of these sanctuary cities, counties, and states. Now it's, and it's also law enforcement. Uh, you know, this Mecklenburg County Sheriff, Gary McFadden, uh, was elected in 2018, and he opted to end the program that allows ICE, state, and local law enforcement agencies to share information and work together to identify and remove illegals from the country. And and Michelle, here's a guy, this guy is a sworn law enforcement officer, wears the badge, runs the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Department, and refuses to turn over illegals who they're holding to ICE. Yes, these are outlaws. And people who I call sanctuary anarchists really should be subject to criminal prosecution. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a public uprising against the war on immigration and customs enforcement officials. You mentioned the program involving local, state, and federal partnerships and cooperation. It's called 287G. I've been writing about it since uh, the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the 18th anniversary of which we will be commemorating this week. Right. And it's, a, it's as if there's this collective amnesia 
it's not just on the part of these Democrats who want Medicare for all and driver's licenses and discount, discounted in-state tuition for illegal aliens, but unfortunately, too many police chiefs and sheriffs are, who are doing the bid of Open Borders, Inc. Our guest is Michelle Malkin. She's the author of the very important new book, Open Borders, Inc., Who's Funding America's Destruction. We have a huge decision to make next year, Michelle. I keep saying on the radio day in and day out, there is a solution to this. There is a political answer. It comes in going to the polls and voting for, for Republicans whose policies reflect the common sense of most Americans. Is there any Democrat on the horizon in this crowded field of Democrat candidates for president who, who reflect the wisdom that is imparted in your book? There's only one who has shown even a glimmer of common sense and logic and sanity, and that would be Tulsi Gabbard. Right. But she is still going to end up being held hostage to uh, the radical amnesty forces. Every other candidate has raised their hand uh, to decriminalize border trespassing mm. at a time when MS-13 gang members and illegal alien rapists are running rampant in sanctuary cities, counties, and states. You know, I, I've been on a, a, a theme today, and it fits into your book, and it fits into what you are alerting us about when it comes to illegals and the failure to connect the dots of illegals. This is something that the president said when he was a candidate and came down the escalator, and he they've never forgiven him. They've never forgotten when he said Mexico isn't sending its best. There are rapists coming across the border. There are criminals coming across the border. And it was like from that moment on, he was branded this hate-mongering, bigoted, evil guy. And yet we see these stories of illegals committing crimes here in the streets of the United States, in North Carolina, in Florida, you know, all over the country. Uh, but, there's a, but there's a strategy behind it, right, Michelle? There's a concerted, careful strategy to smear and vilify before you can get even get out of the gate. And so even common sense responses to something like not cooperating with ICE is met with the smear of bigotry and 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 racism and hatefulness. They, in other words, the other side, they know precisely what they're doing, don't they? They do. You hit the nail on the head, Mike. And I have a an whole entire chapter on the Southern Poverty Law Center smear machine. Yep. I've been up against it. I'm sure you have as well. For more than a decade, uh, any time that you give life to principles of sovereignty and the rule of law, you're deemed a hate monger. I mean, the list is so long of who is a hate speaker that, I mean, it would be a shorter list if they had one of who is not. It's ridiculous. They've gone after people of color like myself and branded us white supremacists. <laughs> And I go after all of the money funding that machine as well, even at a time when the SPLC has been subject to internal complaints about discrimination and harassment. They're still quoted as if they are a credible source by the likes of CNN, MSNBC and The New York Times. Yeah. Your first book, Invasion, How America Still Welcomes Terrorists, Criminals and Other Foreign Menaces, was a number one New York Times bestseller from that book and then seven later to this one. What's your big takeaway, Michelle, in terms of what you've gleaned through your years of studying this and writing about it? What do you, in other words, what what are some conclusions in Open Borders Inc. that you didn't reach in Invasion? Well, I think it's more of fortification, and in Invasion, which was written after the 9/11 terrorist attacks, which right. I was really fueled by my passion. One of the things that was important to know was that it took ideological alliances on both sides to uh, achieve this paralysis in immigration enforcement. And that's only been made clearer in the subsequent books that I've written. I wrote another book called Sold Out. Right. Loved it. Loved it. All right, Michelle, I know you're up against the clock. I think we lost. Did we lose your Skype? No, we got her. Yeah, we kind of froze up there. Michelle Malkin, the great Michelle Malkin joining us. Uh, thank you, Michelle, for spending some time with us. I hope everybody gets your book, Open Borders, Inc., Who's Funding America's Destruction? Uh, and it's, you know, hey, push back at me. Tell me about this sheriff in North